79 free throw attempts those last two games, or what, what is that a byproduct of? I would say it's a byproduct of college basketball, that the teams that we're playing feels that analytically that they shouldn't double people. And so then they need to double us, and they're just not used to it. And I think it gets them out of their comfort level. And then they look at things and uh, think, well, okay, we'll stay one-on-one -on -one and just live with it. But then they start fouling. And then they get people in foul trouble. And when we get to the free throw line, and then it's just a domino effect from there. So, I, But I think a lot of it has to do with the landscape of college basketball and how people play. They're just not accustomed to doubling and being in those rotations. Coaches don't like being in rotations. So the people that will stay with it more are the people that do it more. Um, and I don't think they call as many fouls. I don't know in our league. I, think, I, think it's, I don't think we had a poor whistle as a team this year. I think Zach Eady had a poor whistle, though. I think we would all agree to that. And uh, and we were more aggressive. I thought we really, I thought Travion was more aggressive of going, you know, just right at people. I thought Zach was more aggressive. So I think it's just a combination of all those all those facts. Yeah, I mean, is, that, is that something that continue, needs to continue to happen for you guys? Going sure. This weekend? <laughs> if we can get that many free throws, that would be, that would be great. Um, and, you know, and I, I saw some comments from, you know, the head of officials about that. He just said, hey, some games have fewer free throws and because there's fewer fouls. Some games have more fouls. And, you know, that's – you're just not going to have a set number of fouls no matter who's out there on the court. And, and so I think we just need to, you know, keep playing to our strengths and, and keep working to, to get the ball in those sweet spots. The challenges that come with playing the team that's kind of becoming one of the feel-good stories of the tournament, anything like that? Well, I think any time you have somebody that's played at a very high level and, uh, you know, they're riding that wave, you know, they, they've played well, though. I mean, they, they played well against Kentucky. They played well against Murray State. They've won nine straight games. So I think that's the challenge of just playing a, a good basketball team um, that's playing their best basketball of the year. Um, have you seen anything in, 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 in Sasha the last couple of games that – maybe can turn things around for him? Well, I think he's he's played well. He hasn't shot well, but I think he's played well. He's done some good things for us, and uh, he's just got to stay with it, just keep taking good shots and taking the ones that are there. And He's not forcing things. He's, he's taking what's come his way, and he just, you know, he hasn't got as many looks, um, but he's still the ones he's gotten have been pretty good looks. So he, he's just got to take things in rhythm and, and keep doing other things. If a shot goes, great. If it doesn't, he still can help us win the game. What stands out about their defense? What stands out is the aggressiveness. I think they're, they're very uh, aggressive on the basketball. They take things away. Um, they try to knock you out on the post. Um, but they have interchangeable parts. So they have a lot of those kind of hybrid forwards that can play the three and the four that are long, that will block your shot, that will contest high. And they're just all over the place. There's, Coach Katie used to always say good players can be in two places at one time. And right away I knew I wasn't a good player. So that, that really helped my confidence. Um, but they're just, they got a lot of guys that can be in two places at one time. They can be active on the ball, bounce off, get back to their man, and just make things really difficult on you. That's kind of a big picture question for you. You have, you could build a whole offense around Jaden. You could build a whole offense around your two centers. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of mouths to feed, so to speak. How has this worked, you know, from an offensive perspective? Were there challenges to that? Not really. No. You know, you're not going to go, even though you got a leading scorer and you got somebody who gets more opportunities than the other. You, you know, you've got to have balance. So we still have time to, to run some sets for Sasha. You know, we've as the season's progressed, we've ran things for Eric Hunter. And Eric Hunter's done a good job of attacking mm -hmm. and getting downhill and uh, making plays, especially going to his left. So, like, we still run two to three things for him a game. We still run, you know, a handful of things. Um you know, for Sasha, we run a lot of stuff for our big guys and a lot of stuff for Jaden. So just, just trying to have balance but also understand, you know, where your advantage is and, and how the game's unfolding. Sometimes your advantage is, you know, all those things that you mentioned. And that's That makes it difficult, but that's a good problem to have. Jaden's the sort of player, though, who kind of needs space. And yeah. Zach and Travion obviously consume space. Is Has he had to learn in any way to kind of – best put his skills to use around that sort of No, he's just compliment. had to learn to uh, take what the defense gives him. Just attack, you know, attack people in space, really look to be aggressive. 
But once people overdo it and they shrink the court on him, get the ball out of his hands, I think he, he, he's done a really good job of that in the NCAA tournament. Uh, Zach and Travia, uh, just coming into the NCAA tournament, just talked about the challenges of playing against some smaller interior defenders. Yeah. Uh, another interior, smaller interior defensive yeah. team, and St. Peter's coming out. Do you think just after these first two NCAA tournament games, they're a little bit better equipped to kind of go into that with the right mentality in terms of attacking right. that kind well, of the, defense? Those guys are hard to go against. People don't realize right. if you don't move around, if you just let them sit on you and get underneath you, sometimes those guys can be hard to play against. But um, now you just got to do your work early, no matter who you're playing, no matter how what, how tall they are or how big they are. You just got to keep working for your position and then take what they give you. I think they, we've been real aggressive because people have stayed one on one, but also people have doubled some. And when they have, our guys have made simple passes. When we try to make crazy one-handed passes up through a double team, that's normally going to be a pick six the other way. But we've, we've really minimized that, even though we still have we've had a couple possessions like that. How much notice do you give Ethan on what you might need from him defensively before every game? Say that again. How much notice do you give Ethan before? I don't, like, give, I don't give him any notice. Yeah, so Just talk about like you know, so, who they're, who's out there, who he could guard. See, the thing with him, you might as well talk about their whole team outside of their center because he could go on any of them. And so, like, you know, he knows that there's games he could go out there and play 22, 23 minutes, he could play five. You know, it just kind of depends on the matchup. It depends on how people are playing. He's really put himself in a good position because you you need people that can defend. And we saw that in the Texas game. And, and sometimes when we're playing well, you don't need it as much. Yeah. You know, and, and so it's kind of a give and take. And I, I just kind of organically let it unfold and then just kind of play it by ear and see. But he's done a great job, you know, from guarding Keegan Murray to guarding Marcus Carr. And, you know, he's – He's really helped us and gave us kind of an interchangeable piece defensively. But, you know, he did a lot of good things offensively, too. The charge that he had that ended up being a turnover, I like that play. They trapped us. They threw it to him in the corner. He attacked. Um, it was a good call. You know, he did charge. But sometimes he, he, he kind of handles it and dribbles to pass. And I like it when he's aggressive looking to score. So when they take that away, his natural instincts to pass will take over. But just what you're getting overall now from the bench. Yeah. And all those – you know, when you go back to November and December, and when you were playing ten guys, right, is this the payoff for doing that? Yeah, no question. And that that was the the one thing that I really liked about the Yale game is getting a lot of people playing time. So I think you know you have those, you have that nervousness until you get into that kind of a kind of a venue, an NCAA tournament. Now being able to play through that first game and get some experience for everybody, I think really helped us in the Texas game. You know, Caleb makes a big three um, in that game, and so you know. We talked about Ethan, you know, Brandon had, had got in, played, and so, like, that's what you need. Like, you need some guys that are that feel comfortable out there, you know, playing and competing, but you also have a lot of different ways to go. You know, you get into foul trouble, something crazy happens, you know, and you've got guys that have been in games and play in the NCAA tournament that you feel good about.